Hello? Oh, there we go. Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are here this morning in person or online, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There are a few announcements that I would like to draw your attention to. We are officially in the season of Lent. Uh, Lent began on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. It's our first Sunday in Lent. There's a number of Lenten things happening, and you can pick up by a Living uh, Living Lent 2022 um, information card at the entrances to the sanctuary. Um, One of the things that's happening begins tomorrow, and we are going to be doing Um, yoga, uh, beginner's yoga. Martha Slocum, our uh, director of um, Next Generation Ministries, is a um, certified yoga instructor. So we have a professional guiding us through this season of Lent and this discipline. So it's at 10 o'clock in Millard Hall, and I hope that you will consider coming and being a part of that as as we um, stretch our mind and our body and our spirit this Lenten season. If you have questions, you can talk to myself or to Martha um, about it, but hope that you will join us and um, feel free to invite a friend or two as well. Also, our Lent um, Bible study has begun. It's on Tuesdays at 1030, uh, as well as Lenten worship will be midweek at Midtown at 630. And the plan is to meet in Jenks Lounge for worship and um, with the possibility of needing to move to a bigger space. So um, hopefully you will plan to be there and be a part of that. If you are coming for Midweek at Midtown and you will be joining us for dinner, we do ask that you sign up. I'm gonna say it five times. We ask that you sign up, it's really important. So you can sign up in uh, Calvin Hall, there's a bulletin board, there's a sign up there. You can sign up in the red books as you pick them up and write your name and pass them along. Or you can sign up by calling the church office. And we ask that you sign up so that we know how much food to order so we have enough for everybody. So what am I asking you to do? Excellent. Excellent. So anyway, everyone's invited, but we do ask that you sign up and help us to be faithful stewards of our resources so we don't have leftover food and we don't have... um, a scarcity of food. Also, um, there's also a um, Thursday morning group that's reading and reflecting on the book um, Wholehearted Faith by Rachel Feld Evans. That class is happening via Zoom and invite you to be a part of that. If, um, if you'd like to, you can get the Zoom information from the church office or myself, uh, and it, it's open to everyone. So next week, next Sunday, the 13th, is... Um, The Gideons will be joining us for worship. As you know, the Gideons, we've had a connection with the Gideons here for years, and um, we will have a special guest come and share with us a little bit about the Gideons. Also, um, Easter flowers, if you would like to purchase Easter flowers to adorn the sanctuary on Easter, there are order forms that have been emailed in the emana and with the, with the bulletin, and I think there was in the newsletter. There's some forms also on the bulletin board in Calvin Hall. The deadline for that is the 15th of March, and we are only ordering the amount of flowers that people have ordered. So we will not have extra. So if you want flowers for Easter, then you need to make arrangements. All right, lots of things going on. I think... That will do for now. Um, But if you want to know more, you can always pick up this uh, half sheet of paper that gives you a calendar of events that are happening with new additions um, every now and again. But at this moment, I invite um, Lindsay McKee to come up. We have a moment for mission from Fellowship and Hospitality. Good morning, First Pres. I'm very 
glad to see that every week we're getting more and more people coming in. So that's a really great thing. Well, I'm on the Fellowship and Hospitality Committee, and we decided it was time to do a gathering because it's been a long time. So next week, after church, we're going to have our own fish fry. So what's going to happen? It's a $5 charge, and I am going to be out in the, in the fellowship hall, and we're going to, oh, enjoy fish. And if there's choosy people that don't like fish, we're going to have chicken too, but we need on the order blank form that's going to be out there, you have to pick what, what you're going to have, if you're going to have fish or chicken. We're going to have coleslaw, fries, and beverage for $5. That sounds pretty good to me. But we just wish that all of you can come and join us because we'd like to see our friends and family back again at church. So thank you so much, and I'll be sitting out there at the desk. Thanks, Lindsay. So again, hope that you will consider joining for lunch, um, fish fry. It's a catered meal, um, and the suggested donation is five dollars. Uh, and again, you need to. Excellent. You guys are going to get really good at that because we really need people to sign up for things. Um, the other announcement that I have to make as we enter into a time of worship is if you would like to. Um, have a ribbon in support of Ukraine. Um, they are available. I believe there's still some in, in the back of the church on the table. Yes. Um, so you can pick one up out there um, or see myself or Kathy Stockham and we can get you one of those. Friends, it is good to be together this day and I invite you to stand to greet your neighbor. If you're watching online, let us know that you're there. Friends, it is good to be together. Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Please join us in our first praise song, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just. By His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves his love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves his love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice. Great are 
the Lord and worthy of praise. Friends, will you join with me in our call to worship? We gather today as people trying our best to pass daily tests, tests of honesty, integrity, faithfulness, and courage. Even when we struggle, we forge ahead with the understanding and grace of God. God stands by us in our trials, giving us strength to defeat those who take joy in watching us stumble. God gives us what we need to stand firm, no matter how difficult the road may be. Let us worship God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever. My Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, amazing love, amazing grace, amazing love. We have
have a God of amazing love who extends us amazing grace every day. Because there are times where we fall short, where we mess up, but God in his infinite love for us reaches out and extends us grace. Friends, will you join with me in our prayer of confession followed by our own time of silent prayer? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we grow up being told that practice makes perfect, fully knowing that perfection is impossible to attain for anyone but you. Yet we keep trying, pushing, working, sometimes to the point where nothing else matters. We cut corners, make excuses, and look for loopholes while trying to make things easier, even when we know we shouldn't. We bargain for what we want, sometimes even losing ourselves to seal the deal. Help us to see that there is much more to life than business success or personal gain. Show us that your way, the way of truth and righteousness, is better than shortcuts, better than the temporary grand rewards won in this world. Be with us as we realize that gaining anything at the risk of losing you leads us away from your goodness and strength. Hear now our silent prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And friends, there is good news. Just as Jesus is tempted, we are lured by the devil in many ways. Whether needs, wants, or desires, Satan distracts us from the path which God leads us. Even when we stray from the truth, stumble on broken hearts, or are lost in a fog of false promises, the Lord is there to pick us up, love us, and forgive us as we continue our quest to follow him. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Children, I invite you forward for the children's message. All right, we're gonna start with a game. We're gonna, or we're gonna, a challenge maybe. And we're gonna try it a few different ways. So I'm gonna give everybody a cup. So we're gonna try this challenge. Yep. And we're gonna see. Is challenge? No, but maybe we can do one after church. All right, so everybody's gonna get a cup. All right, let's see. We're gonna try this challenge three ways. Here you go. Um, one, two more. Oh, that's such a great question. Why do we have a cup? So I want to see if we can do something, and we're going to try it three ways. And I know that many of you are really good actors, and I know that you guys can be really dramatic, right? Yeah, I've seen it from a lot of you. So the first time we're going to do this challenge, which I haven't told you what it is yet, we're going to try and do it selfishly. Are you guys ever kind of selfish and greedy, and you want to keep everything to yourself? Can you, if you've never been that, which some of you I'm seeing are nodding your heads, no, you could act that way. You could pretend if you've ever seen anyone else being selfish. What might being selfish look like? Kind of keeping it short. So our challenge is we're going to see if we can build a circle with our cups on the floor. So let's try it. First time we're going to be selfish. All right, let's see if we can build a circle, but everyone be selfish and greedy and hold on to your cup. You don't want to give up your cup. Selfish and greedy. Hmm, this is kind of taking a long time. 
This isn't really working very well. Okay, let's try it again. This time, let's try and help each other out, but I still, like, I want to be the last one to put my cup in because for some reason I think that's important. So can we all try it again? But I think we're going to try and be helpful, but we're going to kind of hold back because we want to be the last one to put it in. Let's see if we can build a circle that way. All right, no, you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh. So, I insist. Yeah. All right. Huh. All right. So this way didn't really work. We're going to try it. You guys are really good at acting, I think. Okay. So that one didn't work out so well. Let's try. Let's see if we can all try to work together as a team and help one another and be supportive. If you want to try, you can come. Otherwise, you can just watch. Let's see if we can build a circle this time. Oh my gosh, a circle is coming together. Emma, did it, you get yours in? Oh, do you want to do it, Justin? Oh my gosh, do we have a circle now? Do you want to put yours in? Or just one? Yeah, we did it! Woo! All right, so I'm going to, let's see if we can stack the cups up together. Wow. All right, great job. So. We can do a lot of things when we work together and we help each other. Like we can build a circle when we all bring what we have and we work together, right? So we are going to be doing during this season of Lent something called One Great Hour of Sharing. Do you guys remember ever doing this fish banks? Oh, yeah. yeah, so we're going to do the fish banks again. And what that is is there's people all over who are using their fish banks. And so if everybody does a fish bank, if, if thousands of of people all over each take a fish bank and everybody does a little bit everybody just kind of does their part we can do prayers and we can give a little bit of money if you have coins or dollar bills oh you did oh my gosh that's so great so if everybody can you imagine if we have if 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 tons and tons of people all over are putting money in and then it all they bring it together and they can help people like jesus because jesus really liked to help people didn't he yeah, so we can help people just like Jesus. And if we all just do a little bit, we can make a big difference and we can pray. So I'm going to give you, let's see, um, I am going to give you a fish bank. And this is what they look like. They're kind of hard to put together. So if you need help, you can ask me here. I'll come down here since. Um, so they end up coming together like this, but it's kind of tricky. And they're for adults too. So whoop. We'll have some for you guys also, if anybody wants one. And on it, they have a sheet that has prayers. So if you think about it, everybody is praying to help other people, make sure they have enough food and, um, and different things, there's different activities or prayers or ideas. And then you can put a little bit of money, if you can, into your bank. And then we're going to bring them back on Palm Sunday, which is the week before Easter. And then on here, I also have some coloring sheets. And they say, we choose welcome. And this might be an activity for some of you to do during worship today. There's coloring pencils in the back of the sanctuary that you could get. You could color these. And anybody who colors one of these and puts it outside my office, I'm going to display these outside my office. Okay? So anybody who wants to, I would love for you to do coloring. Awesome. I am so glad because then I know I'll at least have one outside my office and that is going to be great. And then we'll display them so other people can see that we are helping other people and we're trying to be like Jesus. All right. So with that, let's pray. And then I'm going to give you your fish banks. And like I said, you might need some help because they're a bit on the tricky side. All right. So can you take those? I'll take those back. Excellent balancing skills. All right, let's pray, and then I'll give you your sheets for one great hour of sharing. All right, let's pray. Can you guys repeat after me? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for teaching us, teaching us how to share, how to share. And, help. and help. Amen. All right, so everybody take one of these. And like I said, this is something you could do during church or later. And once you get yours, you can either go back to your seat. You want to take one for your brother, too? Oh, you don't have to have one. That's fine. Um, take, you can take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take one and you can work on it today or later. And you can, anytime you want to bring it outside my office, you can set it and I will display it. There you go.
There you go, one. There you go, bud. There you go. Oh, thanks. All right, did you get one, Emma? Thank you, choir. Our scripture today is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. It's Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. 
And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So today is the first Sunday of our Lenten season. And as we begin this season of Lent, we begin with the scripture best known for the time in which Jesus was tempted in the desert. After he was baptized by John in the Jordan, but before he began his ministry, Jesus went into the wilderness for these 40 days, the basis of our 40 days of Lent. And during that time he fasted, he ate nothing. By the time 40 days were over, he was very hungry, as you can imagine. And it was during this time of hunger, when he was at his absolute weakest, it was then that the devil tempted him. And each time Jesus responded with scripture. Now, some of these temptations seem pretty benign or pretty innocent. Turn this stone into a loaf of bread. What could that hurt, right? Well, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, Jesus responds. Some temptations were not so innocent. Worship me and I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And some temptations seem unrelated to anything crucial. Throw yourself from the top of the temple, God will protect you. It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And then when the devil had finished every test with Jesus and Jesus had responded with scripture, we read that he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. This passage is loaded with lessons on how we can respond to temptation, lessons on what we will face in our life. If we believe Jesus was fully human, he experienced the same things each and every one of us might experience. Lessons that can guide us in how we navigate our lives here on this earth as faithful followers of Jesus trying to walk in his way. Before he was tested, Jesus had taken time to be in solitude with God. He spent 40 days in the desert preparing for his ministry and preparing for these tests to come. And I believe it's because of this that when the tests did come to him, as they will come to each of us, Jesus responded immediately with scripture that challenged the temptations being made by the devil. Jesus immediately countered saying that is against the word of God. Man cannot live by bread alone. Worship only God. Don't put your God to the test. Jesus didn't sit there and have to look up passages from the Old Testament to respond and to find their meaning in the Bible. He just knew that is wrong. Don't do what's being offered. Now, part of this, of course, is because Jesus was and is the Word of God incarnate. So, of course, he knows scripture. Of course, he knows the word of God. But I also think part of the lesson here, Jesus had taken time to build himself up and strengthen himself for this part of his journey, being in solitude with God. He had communed with God. He had fasted. He was following well-established spiritual principles establish disciplines in order to study or prepare for the testing to come. He was rested, he was ready, and immediately able to say no, that is not in line with scripture. Now there are two lessons in this that might help us respond when we're tempted. 
The first is we need to be rested and restored. When we are tired, beaten, and worn down, we don't always or even rarely have the strength to make wise and holy decisions when we are faced with temptation. Whether that temptation is a temptation of the flesh, temptation of wealth, temptation of idolatry, regardless, the devil does not strike when we are at our strongest. He will wait until we are at our weakest, our defenses down, our inability to cope, at our most vulnerable time to be influenced by him. We don't think clearly when we are just drained. And not just physically drained, but spiritually drained. Let me ask you, when was the last time you spent serious time with God? Not just for an hour or so on Sunday morning, but in retreat, in study, in scripture reading, alone or with others. If Jesus, who we believe was fully human and fully divine, spent time 40 days preparing for the spiritual battle to come, preparing for the beginning of his ministry, preparing for this time of testing, why would we think we need to do less? Why would we think we don't need to spend time with God in a very serious manner regularly? And the second lesson is this. You'd better know what Scripture says and what it doesn't say. Because if you want to respond well when tested, when temptation comes your way, we need to know what we're responding with and what we're responding against. Adam and Eve failed their test, and part of that failure was when the serpent said, didn't God say this? Their response should have been, no, he didn't say that because the serpent misquoted God. Instead, they took it on faith that the serpent was using the words of God, they gave in to sin, and they were tempted. But they didn't remember God's actual words. So part of Adam and Eve's failure was not responding, no, he didn't say that, you're misquoting him, stop it, get away, because if you're misquoting God now, I can't imagine what comes out of your mouth next will be holy and of God either. Instead, they took it in, considered this misquote of scripture, and we know the results. In the desert, when Jesus was responding to each test with the right answer, Jesus said, no, not that, but scripture says this, and we must as well. We must weigh everything we encounter with the Word of God. So how are you on Bible knowledge? Do you know how to respond to the tough, challenging questions, or even where to look for help and for answers in the middle of the night when much of our testing occurs, doesn't it? Laying awake, unable to sleep, letting our minds run rampant with what-ifs, with crises, with emergencies, many of which never come to pass. What if when you lay awake next time, worried about this temptation, whatever it is, of money or respect or whatever gets into your being to be tempted by, and whether you have enough of it or too much, can you respond with Scripture reminding you that God will take care of His faithful? He knows the number of head hairs on your head. He loves you, and he died for you. What if you responded to the temptation of worry in the middle of the night with the word of God that says, I am with you. I stand by you. I died for you and saved you. Knowing scripture and being rested is critical to being prepared when the testing comes, and it will come. We live in a secular society. We live in, at best, a non-Christian world, at worst, an anti-Christian world. And there will be trials. There will be tests. That is also scriptural. Jesus warned us it's not going to be easy. In fact, when we are told that the devil was done testing Jesus, perhaps the most chilling words I see in the Bible 
the devil departed him until a more opportune time. If the devil is coming back after Jesus in this passage till a more opportune time, do you think he's going to leave us alone? Do you think he's not just waiting for those opportune times in our lives when we are at our lowest? You can bet he's planning on coming back to tempt us. Jesus lived without sin. We live in, around, and among sin everywhere we go. And if the devil thinks it's worth his effort to return to tempt Jesus, you can be sure that we're next on the list because we're such easier targets. So what do we do? We must be prepared. Jesus was prepared. Jesus was ready. Jesus was rested. And we can be too. We prepare with Scripture and we rest in the Lord. And we rest by partaking in a sustaining meal regularly, reminding us of what Jesus did for us, filling us with his broken body and his shed blood. And when the temptations show, we can respond at the ready with the knowledge that whatever those temptations are, and also even if we fail sometimes and fail the test, Jesus paid a price for us that covers all sins, all failures, all the times that we weren't good enough in our minds. Because that's what Jesus did for us. He made us and he makes us good enough through him, through forgiveness, through grace. But to fight the temptations, we must be prepared. Not just to go through the motions, because if we are prepared to just go through the motions, we will absolutely get laid out flat when temptation strikes. <laughs> going to get much easier than that if we're not ready. Amen. Please stand for hymn number 783, When We Are Tested. Sustains us by night and by day. When in the desert we cry for relief, pleading for paths marked by certain belief, lift us to love you beyond sign and test. Trust in your presence, our only true rest. When we are tempted to harder our souls, trading the truth for the power to control, teach us to worship and praise only you. Struggled and searched for the night, sorting and 
sifting the wrong from the right. Savior, surround us with circles of care. Angels of healing, of hope and of Friends, I invite you to join with me as together we affirm our faith with those that have gone before us and those that will come long after us with the Apostles' Creed. Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friday, March 4th, was a world day of prayer. As a part of our prayers this morning, I will offer up a prayer. This prayer is written by Emily Brewer, who is the executive director of the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship. It is a prayer for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Friends, will you join with me in prayer? Lord, this day, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come to worship, to have a safe place to gather. We are mindful, Lord, of those in our church family and those in our individual families who are in need of your presence. God, we pray for those who are recovering from surgery and those that have surgeries coming up this week. We pray for healing, for strength, for your presence to surround them in these times of uncertainty. We also pray, Lord, for those affected by the tornadoes that happened yesterday in Iowa, for those that have lost loved ones, that have lost their homes. Grant them peace. We pray for those who are struggling with new health diagnoses as they await moving forward and how to do so. We pray for those suffering loss, those have, that have lost loved ones, that have lost their jobs, their homes, that have lost their finances and their well-being, for those that are struggling to make ends meet. God, there is so much going on in our lives here, but especially the lives of our brothers and sisters around the world. Hear now these words. God, we sigh. We sigh because words cannot express our anguish, our hurt, our despair, knowing that siblings in Ukraine are fleeing their homes for their lives, that the cities and towns that hold memories and culture and history may be destroyed. The Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans that the Spirit intercedes for us when, with sighs too deep for words. And so we sigh. Let us breathe together in and out. May our sighs remind us that we all share the same air, that what impacts one of us impacts all of us, that life is precious to God and war is never necessary. May our sighs be a prayer for every Ukrainian who worries about surviving today for those who will not survive this invasion, for those who will survive but be forever changed by the trauma of war, 
for those Russian soldiers who question their orders and refuse to use their weapons. May our sighs be a prayer for nuclear deplorification. No, deplore. Never mind. <laughs> for an end to the sin of imperialism and colonization. May our sighs be a prayer for truth, peace, and solidarity to guide each of us. May our sighs be a prayer for Ukraine and the whole world. May our sighs fill our bodies with air to breathe through grief and fear and fill us with courage and connection so that we are ready to act in solidarity with Ukraine for an end to this war and all war. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Friends, as we gather this day, we are mindful of the blessings that God gives us for the blessing of each new day, for the ability we have to come and worship in this place, for the gifts that we have been given, food on the table, shelter over our heads. And friends, as we gather today, we have the opportunity to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. So at this time, I invite the ushers to come forward as we cheerfully give to God what belongs to God. Oh 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, giver of all things, we come before you today with grateful hearts, grateful for the opportunities that we have for safety, for a community where we can gather together to encourage one another, to lift one another in prayer. And God, we ask that you help us to be mindful of all these things, to not take a moment for granted, but to give thanks to you in all things. And these gifts which we now give, may they be multiplied and used for your good and your glory, both here and around the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This is the table of the Lord, the table that sustains us and strengthens us for all the conflicts and battles we might be facing for the temptations that come our way. This is the table of the Lord. It feeds us and nourishes us and supports us. This is the table of the Lord set for each and every one of us. Whether we place our faith in the Presbyterian church system or any church system, this is the table for those faithful. This is the table that's open to all. We believe in this. We find it important to gather together. And as a result, this is a table set with elements that all can partake in, gluten-free bread and grape juice. So come to the table with joy, knowing it's been set for you. And there is a place with your name on it at this table. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to his Father in heaven above, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which I have given for you. And then the same way that he took the bread, he also took the cup. And as he poured it out, he said, This is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Will the ushers please come forward?
friends, this is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ poured out for you. Amen. And every time that we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we remember Christ's promise that he will come again. Will you join with me in prayer? Eternal God, thank you for coming to us in Jesus Christ. Renew in us faith and hope that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts and claim our love as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as together we sing our final hymn. As the wind song through the trees, as the stirring of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the heart made strangely warm, as the voice within the storm, so it is with the Spirit of God. Never seen, ever known, where this wind has blown, bringing life, bringing power to the world. As the dancing tongues of fire, as the soul's most deep desire, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the rainbow after rain, as the hope that's born again, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the green in the spring, as a kite on a string, so it is with the Spirit of God. Making worlds that are new, making peace come true, bringing gifts, bringing love to the world. As the rising of the yeast, as the wine at the feast, so it is with the Spirit of God. Now receive the benediction. Go into this world prepared for the fight that is to come, strengthened by the word of God and rested in the Lord. Go and be prepared. Amen.
Sounds great. Thank you. Have a great week. You too. See you later.